I'm gonna show you how with this free plugin to turn your low end mixes from sounding like this into this. What's up and welcome back to another video. My name is Miles Way. So it's not every day that I cover plugins on this channel because frankly, there's other channels that are specialized in that. And I like to look at hardware or do fun adventures. But every once in a while, a really cool plugin comes across and even better, a really cool plugin that's free. The plugin called Sub Ninja is a brand new take on a spectrum analyzer, essentially designed to really specialize in making sure your kick and sub bass mix perfectly. Getting your kick and sub right has traditionally been one of the hardest parts of mixing, especially if you're not in a professionally treated studio, like most of us aren't. I actually wasn't in one for most of my career, and this plugin would have been a lifesaver back then. The best part is, is that with the code in the description and the pinned comment of my video, it's completely 100% free for viewers of this channel for the whole month of February. So without further ado, let's jump on into Sub Ninja and check out how it works and briefly go over how you can use it in your tracks. If you do like this video, give it a like, thumbs up, share, you know, all that good stuff. Let's get started. So when using Sub Ninja or honestly any analyzer plugin, you have to learn what a properly mixed song in the genre you're looking for looks like. So here's a song I finished. So we're looking at it first through Voxenjo Span, and you can notice we're getting some good information, but it's not really telling us much besides how loud our sub bass is, and there's some other low end information like the kick. Now let's check out the same song on Sub Ninja. So we can tell that instead of the frequency spectrum, we're getting the waveform of the song, and we can turn it to mono mode to look only at the mono frequencies and drag down the frequency spectrum to only look at the sub frequencies below 100 hertz. Now we have a really useful and accurate picture of exactly what's happening. We can see the spikes are our kick drum and the blobs are our bass note. I'd recommend looking at whatever genre you produce because a chill house song like this is gonna have a very different looking low end than a really compressed EDM banger. So now that we know what a properly mixed song looks like, let's use this info and Sub Ninja to pick a bass and kick that are appropriate for our track. So here's the track without any bass and with just a little click for the top kick, but we need to add a proper kick and a proper bass. So here's the first option I have and we're gonna see what it looks like. So as you can tell, there's a massive blob, meaning the kick has a really long release time, especially in the sub frequencies, because remember, this is only showing below 100 hertz. If I mute the bass and we only listen to the kick, Look at that, it's absolutely massive. It's taking up almost the entire quarter note. And what that's telling me with Sub Ninja is that there's almost no space for any bass. Let's go back to our pro reference. If we look, the kick is nothing more than a little punch of energy in this genre, which really allows the song to be warm, open, not too compressed. We can also look at the bass and there's lots of room for it to breathe. So this kind of thing is usually actually really hard to hear without monitors or headphones. So let's solo the kicks and we can just visually look at them. So that's one, that's two. It's better, but it's still longer than our pro track. And kick three is much better. Look at that short burst. It looks exactly like the pro track. Now it's really interesting because you might not be able to hear this, especially if you're producing on laptop speakers. But now that we hear it in the mix, the short punchy sub part of the kick is much better for our track than the long ringing out sub kick. So now we're hearing our bass and we can actually hear what's going on. So already this is a much better mix down than either of the first two kick options. But I think we can do even better for the bass because it's very, very big in certain waveforms, as big as the kick and then in others it's tiny. So let's try our other two bass options for reference. So immediately this one works much better if we look at the difference between the kick drum punch and then the sub bass waveform after, it's much, much more similar to our reference. Let's look at option three to see how it compares. So option three, this is really interesting because it looks pretty okay on paper, but I feel like there's some issues happening, maybe even lower than I can hear. So we're gonna use the warn mode on Sub Ninja to show us whenever a low note hits at 30 Hertz. And there, you see that green line? What that's telling us is that that note is probably too low. So if we go at this bass, we're gonna really have to cut that out. 
Let's take a listen on option two, which I liked even more, to see if it has any bass worn notes that are too low. Oh yeah, there's a little one there, the third note as well. So this is a really clutch feature because I would not have realized that that note was too low because I'm on headphones, which cannot physically reproduce notes that low. Let's listen to our pro reference. So as expected on the pro reference, there's no areas that hit the worn mode because it's been properly mixed. So what Sub Ninja is telling me is that to get our bass mixed as nicely as this pro reference, we're going to have to go in with a little bit of EQ and shave off that very bottom area, even if we can't hear it. So I'm going to grab a low cut filter here and cut it around 30 hertz just to make sure that none of those problem frequencies come through that I can't hear. There we go, the line is no longer there. And the final thing I'm gonna use Sub Ninja for is to compress the sub bass waveform so each of the notes are a bit more equal because the plugins visuals are telling me that some of the notes are a little bit thicker than others. I think that's a bit better. Now remember, each genre is gonna be different and in this style of Deep House, you really don't have to compress too much. You don't have to worry that much if your sub bass notes are a little bit different volume, but for something like a really big dubstep song, you'd really want the bass waveform to look a lot more like a sausage, be closer to volume with the kick and have a little bit less space down there, a little bit less variation in dynamics. And just like that, we've made the bass mix and bass arrangement in this song much more professional, much cleaner, and much closer to our reference with Sub Ninja. All right, well, short and sweet, but that wraps up exactly how Sub Ninja works and how I would use it in my tracks. Now, remember, if you want this plugin, you can get it 100% free for the entire month of February. So big shout out to the him for doing that for viewers of this channel. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.